Hi, my name is John Whitaker, and I want to give you a short review of Letter to the American Church, the movie by Eric Metaxas. Back in 2022, Eric Metaxas released this same title as a book, turned out to be a best-selling book, received a lot of attention. So now this year, he is releasing it as a movie, and the reason for the movie is stated right at the outset. As Eric Metaxas walks into a large, empty, open warehouse structure, his voice states really what seems to be the compelling reason, as he sees it, for producing this movie. And here's what he says. He says, I'm convinced that the American church has arrived at an impossibly, almost unbearably significant moment. And so he's produced both this book and now this movie because he believes we've arrived at a critical hour and that if the church in America doesn't stand up and act, then things are going to get terribly bad. In fact, the comparison for him is really the German church during the Nazi regime. And he believes that the American church and American pastors are acting just like the, Ameri or the German church did during uh, the rise of Hitler to power. Now, before we look at the details of the movie, let me just offer a little bit of a disclaimer by way of full disclosure. Uh, Metaxas is hard selling this movie. He's pushing it on churches by offering a free screening of the movie and not just offering a free screening. He's doing so by saying, if your church won't host a free screening of this movie, then you should leave your church and go somewhere that's more faithful to Jesus and the gospel. So full disclosure, I find that kind of pressure selling very disturbing. All right, now back to our review. And let me begin by offering a summary of the movie. The movie is actually super well produced. It's not cheesy, it's pretty engaging. And it begins right where the book began as well, it follows much the same structure, in fact, as the book. And so it begins with Dietrich Bonhoeffer's message to the German people and the German church in the days immediately after Hitler's rise to power. And it proceeds then to describe the ways that uh, Hitler solidified his power, took control of the media, used propaganda, indoctrinated children, and various techniques all to achieve his dictatorial objectives. And then what the movie does is it condemns the church in Germany during the early 1930s, and especially the German pastors, because they were too silent. And that's the point of comparison for the church in America today. And so at that point, the movie turns to present-day USA and contends that our current situation today is just like those early days, those early months in Germany when Hitler first took power. It was in those early months that the German church could have and needed to arise and act. And now, at this moment in America, it's the same time for the church to arise and act as well. And that's the primary point of comparison. But it also compares our situation to Mao's takeover in China and looks at some of the ways he did that. And so there's this rally cry for the American church to stand up and speak out uh, and stop the Marxist takeover in America. Or very soon, it'll be too late, just like it was too late for Germany, just like it was too late for China. The kinds of examples that the movie gives of the present day takeover that's happening in America are things like abortion, gender ideology, BLM, mask and va vaccine mandates during the pandemic. And the overall message is that the American church, and especially its pastors, must immediately arise, or who knows how bad things are going to get. So that's basically what the movie is about. Now, there are some things out of this movie that I find very helpful. Let me highlight three of them. First, the movie challenges pastors and the American church and American Christians to use our influence for the well-being of others by calling out injustice and unrighteousness in our own nation. I think that's good and that's helpful. Uh, also, the movie reminds us of something that's very critical that we must never forget. It reminds us that bad politics causes real and great harm to people. And the movie emphasizes, both by Germany and China, that history shows this kind of harm over and over again. We must not forget it, and we must, therefore, remember what bad politics does. And a third helpful a moment in the movie is that the movie alerts us to some of the false ideas and misplaced values that are currently plaguing our nation, ideas and values that are destructive to human flourishing. And so those three points, I think, are very helpful to the movie. And yet, nevertheless, 
I find a number of things concerning in this movie. Um, in fact, I would say the overall approach and overall tone is less than helpful. So let me just highlight again three things that I find concerning about this movie. First is it's alarmist. It feeds on a message of fear and certain doom if we don't act now. And it essentially takes every bad thing that uh, has happened in the last five years in America and says, see, it's just like Nazi Germany uh, when Hitler was first rising to power. Uh, it's just like Mao's regime when it's taking over China. And so it compares everything to the worst examples of human history from the last five years in America. Uh, also, I find this movie to be unbalanced and unnuanced. And what I mean by that is it, it just is extremist and kind of alarmist and goes to extreme examples. So let me just give you two, highlight two ways I find this to be unbalanced and unnuanced. First, the movie puts things like mask mandates and vaccine mandates on the exact same level as, say, abortion and gender ideology. And that's just not accurate. The mandates of the pandemic don't have the same moral weight as abortion or of many of the gender affirming policies of trans ideology. Or another example of it being uh, unbalanced and unnuanced is that uh, in the movie, they interviewed Charlie Kirk, well-known conservative commentator, and Kirk discusses pastors who don't uh, speak up and act out against what's happening. Ab about such pastors, here's what Charlie Kirk says. He says, I don't actually believe they're real Christians. He goes on to say, it says in the book of James that by your deeds, you will know them. Well, I just don't see the deeds. I see cowards. I see apathy. I see the spirit of Ahab. I see the spirit of Jezebel. I don't see the spirit of Elijah. And so the message is, unless you agree with Kirk or agree with this movie and address the issues the same way he believes you should, then you're a faithless coward and not a real Christian. And I find that very troubling and concerning. A third thing about this movie that I find concerning is just the militant tone, the militant images, the militant call to action. Yes, for sure, they're not really calling us to literal arms, right, to go to war for the sake of our country. And there is a passing line in the movie about peaceful protests, but the overwhelming tone of the movie, both in word and in image, is militant. One speaker contends that real men, uh, that to real men, the church today looks like being neutered. Uh, the speaker goes on to assert that real men are warriors who do hard things and they need to stand up and protect their country. And while those words are being spoken, what's playing on the screen are military images and hand-to-hand -hand combat type training. And I just think that misses the mark. Uh, the New Testament invitation to its followers is not to be necessarily warriors who engage in physical ba battles, but missionaries who lay down their lives for the sake of others. In fact, I think of Revelation chapter 12, where it was by laying down their lives and the word of their testimony that they overcame the beast. And that really is the way we need to approach things. And true, the New Testament doesn't uh, disinvite soldiers away from following Jesus. It welcomes them into following Jesus. It doesn't even tell them to leave their occupation. Uh, but it's inaccurate, I think, to depict uh, militancy and fighting as the dominant image of what it means to serve and follow Jesus. In fact, Jesus' own approach, I think, when you read the Gospels, is much more measured and discerning. At times, Jesus does speak up and directly confront uh, some of the religious leaders of his days who are causing problems for people. But other times, he leaves Galilee. He goes north. He goes west. He gets out of town to avoid conflict so he can focus on training the 12. And that's really where most of his energy goes, is to training the 12 discipling and preparing them to carry on his message and his ministry after he's gone. And then, of course, ultimately, how does Jesus choose to defeat evil? Not by standing up and fighting, but by laying down his life on the cross. In fact, those of us who are his followers are called to imitate that. We're called to take up our cross and follow him. We're called to be as shrewd as serpents and at the same time as innocent as doves. And so, for those reasons, I find this movie just a little bit concerning. Um, now, what if it really is like the 1930s, right? I can imagine you're listening to this review 
And you can want to push back and say, well, it just seems like you're assuming that it's not quite as bad, not quite as bleak as Metaxas and others seem to think. But what if it really is? What if it really is just like the 1930s? And to that, I would say, fair enough. If it really is as bad as Metaxas says it is, if it's as really of a late hour as Metaxas suggests, well, then what it really entails is serious thinking, clear-headed and wise teaching. Lathering Christians up into a militant political block like this movie tends to do only joins all the cultural outrage. And it's not going to help us, I think, move the needle forward on the issues that really matter most. What we're going to do is we're going to end up adding to the noise. We're going to end up being indistinguishable from all the other angry political voices out there. And that, I think, will lead us to failing to be what Jesus calls us to be. And that is to be a city set on the hill, pre presenting a different way of being human. Uh, but if, by contrast, we wisely pick our battles and we dig deep into God's word and what it says about things like gender and the value of human life and other key political issues, then we can disciple our people well to think critically about those crucial areas of biblical truth. And that really needs to be our focus. We need to focus on discipling our people well so that they can live out what the Bible teaches, not on conditioning our people to, to always be able to list off all the way those those other politicians are wrong, the Democrats or whoever, right? Or culture at large is wrong. It's well-discipled followers of Jesus that actually make a difference in society. So if I could actually recommend a different work that I think is more helpful, I would recommend David Young's book, Resilient, Standing Firm in a Hostile World. Came out right about the same time as Letter to the American Church was released as a book. I read both of them at the same time found David Young's book much more solid, much more practical, and much more helpful. So I recommend that to you. Now, let me just mention two other things before we wrap up this review. First is, I think there's some key unexplored questions in this movie that Metaxas and others really need to address. The first question is this, what exactly is the relationship between the church and the state? Like, and if since the the since God's people is no longer identified with a nation any longer, since it's now a multinational uh, kingdom of God that's embodying the spirit of Jesus, how are we then, as God's people, supposed to exercise our role uh, within society within our nation? I think that's a fair question. What exactly is the relationship between church and state? And Metaxas never really addresses that question and seems to assume something almost like a synthesis between church and state. The best thing that could ever happen is a Christian takeover of the country. I think we need to wrestle with that. I also think we need to wrestle with a second question, and that is, how does the kingdom of God advance? If our primary allegiance is not to America, but to God's kingdom, what's that kingdom's mission? And what does that look like for the American church at this present cultural moment? We've got to wrestle with that kind of question. How does the kingdom of God advance? It's those kinds of foundational questions that need to be explored as we think through what is our role and how do we best engage the current cultural and political moment. So as I wrap up this review, let me just ask one final question. Would I recommend a free screening of this movie for your church? Here's my concern with that. Um, my concern is that those Christians who are more on the, let's take back America for God's side of things, they're only going to be made more inflamed, more lathered up to fight for America by this movie. And those who are less inclined to that mindset, if they even watch the movie, come to the screening, I don't think they're likely to be swayed by the movie. And so what ends up happening is you just drive a deeper wedge, not only in culture, but you drive a deeper wedge even within the church. Uh, between these two different groups of people. And you tend, I think, to cause those groups to disparage each other even further. And I just don't see how that's going to actually help us be good missionaries to our community. So I'm not sure if I were in your shoes as a pastor, I would host a free screening unless, unless I was also prepared to use it as a discipleship opportunity to explore those kinds of foundational questions, to explore the kinds of deep issues that need to be explored as we think through how can we actually 
help our culture see Jesus's vision for what it looks like to be a good human. And our calling is fun fundamentally to be a city set on a hill. That doesn't mean that our first job is to take back our country for God. It does mean that we show the people in our communities, in our cities, and in our country a better way of being human. How can we do that? That's where I think we should put most of our energies rather than becoming this militant political bloc fighting to take back our country for God. <laughs>